Welcome gamers! Today we're going to take a look at a classic arcade light gun game from back in 1989 called Line of Fire. So this game was developed and published by Sega and it has a militarized theme to it that was somewhat similar to say Taito's classic Operation Wolf series. And so this was a multi-directional scrolling light gun game and it was also one of Sega's lesser known arcade titles of that era. Now, when we think of classic Sega arcade games of the late 1980s and early 1990s, this probably isn't the first game that comes to mind. In fact, if anything, we would probably more typically think of series like Afterburner or maybe even Sega's classic OutRun racing series, among others. And to be honest, this game really isn't even talked about all that much by today's standards, but regardless, while this game didn't live up to the fame and fortune of some of Sega's more notable light gun titles, say those from the mid-1990s like the House of the Dead series or Virtua Cop, I honestly thought this game was a lot of fun to play and I would highly recommend it. And so the gameplay is pretty straightforward. You have two weapons to battle with throughout the course of the game. You have a primary gunner and then a secondary missile attack. Missiles can be replenished by shooting crates marked as bomb. The same goes for health. There are medical crates stationed throughout the course of the game that can be used to increase your lifespan at any given time. You can see I just hit a couple right there. And so the game is a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this. And it, you know, at first glance, it really doesn't look like it's all that challenging or difficult to play. To be honest, it really isn't until you take into account the fact that, well, you have a very limited number of continues available at your disposal before the game ends completely and you're forced to restart all the way back at the beginning of the game. That being said, the trick to playing this game is to pick up as many of those healing life crates as possible to spare your continues for later. Now, we're getting, getting ready to head into the uh, jungle scene here, and this is really cool. This is actually one of my favorite stages. Uh, and there's something else to note about this, is that um, there's a lot of similarities between this game and some of Sega's other classic arcade light gun titles including Rail Chase and the original Jurassic Park the arcade game. If you look at the jungle scene here, it looks strikingly similar to that scene in the T-Rex scene of the original Jurassic Park game. And something else to note is that there's also trains that you battle in this game. That was a similar theme that we saw in Sega's Rail Chase series. That was a minecart themed rail shooter where you actually do battle trains as enemy bosses. And so the graphics in this game, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, they're really eye, visually eye appealing graphics. I thought they did a great job putting this game together. Uh, just very, very, uh, very vivid, col colorful sprites. Um, the characters, the military men, look like something out of a comic book. They look more like cartoon characters while the warplanes, Jets and attack choppers, etc., and tanks all look somewhat more realistic. And something else to notice about the stage run right now you can see those uh, gorillas in the background there, they kind of hang off the trees. If you shoot the gorillas, they'll start throwing coconuts at you, believe it or not. And so, this is a pretty fast paced game, maybe not as fast paced as, say, Rail Chase or the Jurassic Park games, but. Um, there's a very busy game, there's a lot going on the screen. The explosions look like something out of the Afterburner series. And something else to note about this game, this was not the last military themed light gun game for, that Sega developed. In fact, I think they came out with another military themed game in the late 1990s. What was that called? Um, oh, Behind Enemy Lines. I think they came out with it in 1998 or 1999, and that ran on Sega's Model 2 arcade hardware. Uh, this game ran on Sega's X Heart arcade hardware, and that was two Motorola 68K processors that powered this game, and they actually did a fabulous job with that. 
And so many of the stages in this game boast finely detailed backgrounds, especially those jungle scenes that I mentioned. And they did a pretty good job with the pseudo 3D effects they managed to incorporate into this game. So now we're kind of like in this water stage. This starts getting really busy. This starts to get really tricky. Now it gets to the point where you have dozens of enemies popping up on the screen at any given time and they're all over the screen. And like I said, the trick is to pick up those life crates. I try to shoot as many of those as possible. Now, when we get to the end of this stage, uh, there's kind of a treat. Uh, you actually fight crocodiles, believe it or not. You end up in an enemy compound and all these insurgents, the terrorists come out and they're firing at you and there's all these crocodiles jumping out of the water trying to bite you while you're trying to attack the insurgents. There's also gunboats in here. Uh, you know, besides the tanks and warplanes, etc. Now, not all the warplanes are your enemies. Some are allies. You saw that big red warplane just a moment ago that was dropping missiles. Those are actually your allies. They actually defend you, and uh, they also drop health packs if you shoot them. Now, the other warplanes, the ones that circle together, those are enemy warplanes, and you want to shoot those. Now, we're at the enemy compound. And you can see there's these crocodiles. They're not all really all that detailed looking. And you can see they, it's kind of hard to shoot them. It's kind of hard to target them because you have all the terrorists and you know coming out of all these these coves. And then you have you know trying to shoot the alligators at the same time. It makes it really tricky. But uh, that's just what they incorporated in this game. But then again, they also had gorillas in here too. And so this game is really, really challenging. If you had unlimited continues, then of course you'd be able to beat the game. It would be no problem, right? But uh, that was what, you know, these were quarter eaters. These games were designed to take your money. They had to make money for their arcade operators. Now we're in like this canyon stage. And this starts to get really tricky because now you have enemies popping up on the edges of the cliffs, on from the ground, from the air. Uh, you can see there's tanks um, and the game also incorporates uh, the same sort of parallax scrolling that we saw in many other Sega classic arcade games from that era. You know, uh, parallax scrolling was pretty much the norm with games like from Sega like the uh, Rail Chase series that I mentioned earlier, the Jurassic Park game, the Outrun series also made use of parallax scrolling. And, but a lot better graphics in this game, I thought, than Jurassic Park Arcade. Uh, Jurassic Park Arcade, the gameplay was a lot of fun, but the graphics were really choppy, to be honest. Same with Rail Chase, at least the original Rail Chase game. I really did not like the graphics in the game. They were really blurry. They just did not look good. Uh, so now we're like, now we're like, we're battling so many enemies on the screen. It's just, you can't dodge all of it. You know, you can shoot the missiles out of the sky, but the gunners you can't take out. Now we're, ba we're battling another enemy boss. Actually, this one is really not that hard to defeat. Uh, this one really just takes like a few shots and he's pretty much dead. But yeah, there he goes, he's already dead now. Um, so this is a really interesting game. I'm surprised no one even talks about this game at all. What I'd really like to see is for Sega to take this game and revamp it and just, you know, just modernize it, you know, kind of like they did with Behind Enemy Lines. That game was a little bit slower of a military themed game. It was mostly tanks and uh, the characters looked a lot different than, than what we see in this game. The military in this game, the military men in this game look like something out of Cabal. They look a lot more similar to that than what we saw in Behind Enemy Lines. That game was slower. Like I said, it was a lot slower. This was a lot more fast paced. Something else to note about this game is that the enemies also have secondary attack methods, just like you do. You notice that uh, they were throwing meat cleavers at me. They also throw Molotov cocktails and pipe bombs, among other interesting weapons. And so now we're battling uh, a couple bosses again. Most of the characters in this game are not that difficult to defeat. It's just the fact that there's so many of them on the screen at any given time. 
But the graphics are pretty clean. This is not like Rail Chase where everything was kind of blurry and sometimes it was hard to even realize where you were aiming. But uh, yeah, you just most of the battles in this game is tanks, and that's also what we saw in behind enemy lines. So, anyways, that is Line of Fire, and I had a lot of fun coming back to this game and giving it a play and actually doing a review of it. It's been sitting in the back of my mind for about a year now. And it was really kind of a shame because, you know, we've covered hundreds of arcade games. We have a humongous playlist of them here on YouTube. And, you know, it dawned on me. I was like, you know, I've covered so many of these light gun games. We have reviewed so many of these games. And for some reason, I just let this one fall by the sidelines. I don't know why. And to be honest, people, a lot of people did not like this game. They did not like it. Uh, this had kind of mixed reviews. People actually called this a knockoff of the Operation Wolf series. But well, no, not really. I actually thought the gameplay mechanics in here were a lot different. And so, oh, by the way here, you know, look, we're battling trains. And I mentioned that uh, this was a feature that we saw in the Rail Chase series. This scene is really super difficult because, you know, they're mounted with missile launchers. There's just no possible way that you can shoot everything on the screen right now. Look at this. I mean, they're just, you got missiles shooting at you from two trains that you have to destroy. You have all these enemy surgeons jumping down. You have attack choppers. So this game is really fun. It's really challenging. I do recommend it. If you like military themed shooters, this would definitely be a game that I would recommend. And so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and tune out. Um, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you like this game, definitely do check out um, our massive arcade games playlist. It's huge. I personally have done uh, most of the light gun games that are in there. Look at this stage. Look at these graphics. Is this not cool or what? It kind of looks cartoonish, but you know, it's really colorful. Like look at the sky in the background. See, this is why I really like this game. It look, you know, the characters do look like uh, something out of a comic book, like something out of Where's Waldo, but it's just fast paced. It's fun to play. The graphics are good. They're clean. Sega did an awesome job on this game. I really hope that at some point they'll come back and look at this game and go, hey, you know what, we should, re we should redo this game, we should revamp it and come out with a more modern version of it, maybe with the same style of graphics. I do like these retro graphics a lot, so that would be something hopefully they could stick to. So anyways, many thanks for watching. I'm going to continue to play until my continues are, are burnt out. And uh, if you like this video, again, give a thumbs up subscribe and be sure to check out our arcade games playlist from the front of our channel and until next time take care